نحمد و نسلی و نسلم علی رسول الکریم اما بعد there is a big issue with regards to people going on to this idea of maqasid al-shariya and there is a lot of good in there maqasid al-shariya are there to help but what happened in the modern time when people was aware of the certain thing they found themselves very frustrated thinking that why muslim ummah is down in the dumps and there's no way we could get our happy days of the past returned back to us they felt perhaps it is due to this reason or that reason so every group of people or even individuals would come up with their own ideas and thinking that perhaps that is the reason or that is the reason so whoever is fixated to their reasons they would just consider it to be the sole reason mainly even if they say that oh this is one of the reasons one of the main reasons but they actually in their heart believe that to be the core and sometimes they become so firm on that so pedantic about it that they find it very difficult over the years over the time that they have been thinking about it writing about it talking about it that it become their nature and without perhaps even noticing they became so biased about it in a way partial about it uh, and the very thing that they were trying to fight and trying to write against and say against they become the victim of the same attitude of being quite uh, hizbi tahazzub ta'alli and they feel that you know what this is what we think is right and this is the only right practically they are saying this and doing this as opposed to theoretically when you ask them as a question they would say yes there should be openness and you know we do not get revelation and it is mashallah all uh, ishtihad we feel that this is one of the ways and there could be more ways there could be other ways as well we're not saying that this is the definitive reason behind it but practically they don't say it they don't mean it they would just go by their idea and apply it everywhere and that is possibly a reason for the ummah to be in the shape that the state that they are in because justice dictates that we only say what is haq what is true we cannot say things out of our sincerity but sincerity alone is not enough knowledge plus sincerity even that's not enough so a lot of the brothers and sisters and all the scholars so called like you know leaders of the muslim ummah they are sincere sincere they are mashallah working their way to try and help the ummah as a whole but being sincere and well wisher and keen and concerned and compassionate doesn't help if it is not done with the sense of justice or diana i would like to call it diana what it means is that you have the insight of your own limitations so i'll give you example and that will clarify the people who would want to help but rather than going out and learning that stuff that they want to help out for or the issue that they want to help in they would start treating it sorting it out helping it out now if you do not know how to do cardiopulmonary resuscitation if someone collapses in front of you you do not know how to help that patient to revive you you don't do it because you're only going to make it difficult and perhaps worse for the person and also for the people around someone else could have done that 
but you came in front thinking that you would be able to do it and everyone felt that perhaps he's more qualified let him try and uh, you only messed it and you delayed the resuscitation and the person then actually couldn't make it couldn't revive now you were sincere you had the zeal to help him but you did not have insight so you did not have the diana which is the justice the sense of doing the best for the right person in the right way not knowing your limitation not letting the best things thing to be done to that individual so if you were sincere you would have realized that you know what i am quite keen to help and i have this compassion but i'm not the most qualified person out there let me inquire about it within a second is there someone else who is trained resuscitation trained in the cardiopulmonary resuscitation can someone else do if someone will say yeah, I'm a doctor oh I'm, I've been doing it on a regular basis I actually train for this there are many people like that so fantastic you do it you lead and I will be there to support you if you need any help that's the best the individuals could do and should do not that I am keen so I would do it yeah you can do it if you know how to do it otherwise you're only going to make a mess and this is what unfortunately most people in our world doing they're trying to help the ummah they're trying to help a human being through their zeal their compassion their concern and whatever skills they have without realizing that you know what you are not the best person for that particular job perhaps you don't have a clue about it or you have fantastic idea but you've never done it before go and find someone who would be best to do that so if i get the best person to respond to that question to answer that particular matter to get the best person to do the resuscitation for that collapsing or the person who is just collapsed in front of you then it is your good work as well you will be rewarded for it because you assess the situation got the best person for the best treatment in the right situation and you are part of that so you don't have to do the whole work or main work rather you can just make it more conducive if you've done that then that is actually your dawa that is why forwarding is tough for example that everyone does it these days on on whatsapp it might not be the best thing you need to think am i the right person to do it is it verified even if it's verified should i be giving this dawa so anyway i just gone a tangent a bit but that was just to clarify the point so when people started reading stuff and they got access to different books they all have their exposure to different uh, environment social political inclination and exposure to certain parts of the world where they have been subjected to either oppression or they've seen atrocities committed by the government by the people and they've seen things in different lights according to their experience they all have different ideas so they they have about four or five different groups of muslims uh, who are keen to help the ummah and they are likewise non muslims obviously they've got similar ideas but obviously we're talking about muslims at the moment and they are practicing and they are quite keen to help islam now there are others who are muslim and they want to be muslim and they identify themselves as muslim but their concern is that islam is for personal practices only for them the concept of ummah is not there at all but they're sincere as well for them the main idea is to detach islam or religious practices from the political social arena and let it be confined to the masjid the churches the you know places of worship or their houses so that the world is run in the way that they want it to be run and then you know 
by by the powers to be, and families run in a different way, and they were thereby we can have a nice combination or cohabitation between following Islam and following not following Islam in in different arenas. So we actually compartmentalizing everything, and that is how you would get share for everything and taste for everything that you want. And obviously that is alien understanding to Islam. Islam is there for every walk of life and one has to follow all of those. But unfortunately there are quite sincere and sensible Muslims who wouldn't believe or wouldn't, wouldn't accept that. And that's because again, they have got their own biases and you know, prejudices, prejudices and their own understanding, the shortcoming of their, how they look at things. But inshallah, they would come to the light if they're sincere and they continue to repent and continue to be in connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah would guide them aright but they, nevertheless they still got this idea of Islam and they're still Muslim now not talking about that group because there's a lot more to be done for them uh, with regards to education and, and, uh, and whatnot but when it comes to the practicing people and those who have concern for the humanity with regards to their well-being. So there are certain people who are more concerned about the outward practice of Sharia. And the certain who would just go for more inward practices of Sharia. So the outward people then can be divided into purely outward without any idea of inward. And they are the, you know, political people, more political than practicing Muslim at all. They just do their basic practice, but it's all outward, how you do it. For them, spirituality or tazkiyah doesn't hold much value. They say, hey, it's all fine, you just continue with your outward practice and we all uh, sort you out. The tazkiyah would be done, would be done through that. And there's, there's certain individuals who will be, or the groups even, who would focus on the outward. For them, it is just uh, sorry in, inward and it was just the inward that they are focused on they say you don't even need to worry about your prayer your you know attire the way you, you behave is more important than the way you worship so your worship is dedicated to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah doesn't need you to worship anyway because he is completely independent and um, in one way they're trying to say that allah doesn't need our worship which is actually fine he doesn't but Truly, they are going against the command of Allah. So Allah Himself asked of it. It is not that we are doing it. That, that's what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wanted us to do. So they do not understand the difference between the two. Unfortunately, and then this is how they would come up with the uh, outward or inward, one or the other. But both are the extremes. But we have people like that. Then you would get the moderate people who would want both sides, but with more on this side or more on that side and that is the nature of human being they would have different inclination they would like to do things differently and this this is true for all walks of life the people who are who have like uh, you know more inclination to do the physical work outward work showy stuff that, that not to show off per se but it is something that they can see something which is palpable that they can literally relate to and then that could be their yardstick uh, to see that you know what we are winning we are getting somewhere there are certain people who would look at like you know if they're, if they're, for example if they're collecting money they will want to check their bank every so often just to see that they're making some money they are in positive balance they would they like to see it every so often there are certain who are not bothered about it they just would review it right at the end of the year maybe not on a daily basis not on a weekly even monthly basis for them it's like it doesn't hold any any value but th this is the nature of people people are different by nature and they all have mashallah uh, zeal and, and concern and compassion as long as they stick to the basics they've got their basics sorted out and but they have not got much inclination on one side but they are more inclined to the other side that's perfectly fine so if you look at that group of muslims you would find they're about four or five different categories maybe six categories of muslims who are more into this and these are the these are the people who take islam as a whole they are interested in all of those things yet their focus remains on one or more of those uh you know uh 
you could say the directorate of Islam or subsets of Islam teaching and practice so there are certain people who would just be more focused on the inward and yet they do all the outwards as well the essential ones so they pray and they are more focused on to the tazkiyah so this is, this is the group of Sufiyah this is the group of a spiritual masters and they train and they focus on that they get uh, the, the essence of ihsan and tazkiyah of nafs and ta'abudullah ka'annaka tarawfa illa mtaqud tarawfa illa yurak is their mantra which is based on the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they start off with innama al-a'malu bin niyad actually they are judged by the intentions and intention must be pure so they would work a lot on those and trying to get rid of all the ills of the heart for example like you know the uh, the, the lust the shahwa the, the, the greed the sense of deprivation and hence being impatient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercies and blessings more covetous for dunya lack of shukr lack of gratitude so wouldn't show much so these are all ills having animosity hatred rancor malice uh, against others and uh, jealousy arrogance vanity showiness and these are the diseases of the heart so they, they would work on getting rid of these so these are spiritual masters and then you have another group of people who are more inclined towards teaching the sharia the fiqh islamic law practice practical aspects of sharia and they would teach in madrasa they would teach in university schools wherever they could the idea is to get you educated on quran the meaning and uh, tafsir hadith and this usul al hadith and the fiqh so they're more into these sort of practicalities uh, which is fantastic as well obviously as, and that's needed so and, and, and they do not uh, detach themselves from the basic tazkiyah basic spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but not formally so informally but they're more into this uh, practical aspect of sharia so these are ulama fuqaha and they're working their way then there's third group which is more focused on tabliyah and da'wah calling people to islam not muslims but muslims in different form and form formats so there's famous tabliyah jama'ah they do a lot of that and their focus is on this there uh, others who just do you know a lot of publication nice way of writing attracting muslims uh, uh, to come to practice and non-muslims to come to the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they would encourage even children women uh, from muslim and non-muslim alike so they've got quite a lot of hard work uh, gone into calling people and propagating the message of islam either by writing by talks by lectures by seminars different different activities they would do in their masajid and their uh, halls and arenas and then different places so this is the the, the people who are imparting the, the message of Islam or propagating the message of Islam to others ulama does that as well ulama do a lot of da'wah as well but they do through the pen through the books through the lectures on the pulpit they would not reach out to people as much as the, the special uh, missionary type groups would do and there are many uh, not just limited to Tabliq al there are uh, many others who do the same but in a different format and none of these format is absolutely based in the Sunnah of Rasulullah and none of that is against the Sunnah of Rasulullah meaning none of them is a must that you have to have Da'wah or Tabliq in that way no, it's, it's, it's completely open to people how they feel uh, they need to use it they need to you know, make it more palatable for the people that they invited to Islam so it's, it's, it's open and there's a lot of uh, mashallah good effort from people using and utilizing uh, different resources um, all the different ways of attracting people to Islam so that's the third group and then you have the group which would deal with more political uh, you know uh, Islamic teaching where they would want to get into power and uh, so they do that through the electoral system for example or they would do that 
مثل maybe more انقلابی uh, more like you know revolutionary type activities and that's both completely fine as long as they are doing it within the ambit of Sharia within the parameters of Sharia and they do not go haywire I mean beyond the, the limit sometimes they would be all of these groups could be a bit like you know abnormal or a bit more um, eccentric but that is only a slip of individuals or on one matter they might have heard but by and large they stick to the Sharia rules as long as they have got scholarly support to them and they're running under their tutelage under their supervision under their monitoring so the traditional scholars of all of these subspecialties would be the leaders as long as they are there then it's perfectly fine inshallah ta'ala provided they have all the other essential requirements fulfilled that of basic ibadah basic in a transaction in islamic way basic you know behavior and treatment uh, of the people around them in the society in the family so as long as they're, they're okay with that then focusing on one speciality is not at all a problem rather this is what is expected of people you would not find Hassan ibn Thabit the point of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala and the greatest of the sahaba badri sahabi going out and, and, and you know fighting off as much as you would find Khalid ibn Walid doing that and yet you would not find Khalid teaching you tafsir or narrating a hadith Abu Hulala is doing a lot more of teaching and Ibn Masul is doing a lot more there and you would not find them uh, you know doing something which the people at the front line could do so the, the people have different style and different ideas and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is it like this? that we all excel in different areas and that we work together and it becomes a nice network of people all pulling in the same direction and benefiting the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala become Ansarullah and then another group, the final group maybe or in a couple more groups and one of those would be more to sort of uh, securing the boundaries of Islam but there's a need for it so like you know, actively involved in some uh, res- resistance and uh, Obviously, Muqalabis are like that, but they're more politically driven and they're more uh, politically plus they could resort to uh, to arms as well. As long as this is done within the Sharia boundary, which is more tricky than any of the others, because once they start going in that area, they uh, violate a lot and they do not get the time to learn and improve. For example, the, the, the likes of you know um, uh, jihadi movements in the world. Uh, they do not get time to reflect and then get their spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala although they get a lot of that just by being in the battlefield but for them to learn and improve and assess their situation every so often is difficult and then if they can actually go and be uh, misused by you know any any party or the enemies of Islam or anyone who is following the whims and desires and following the path of shaitan so that is a very very tricky at the moment and it must be then as we all know under the guidance of a uh, islamic leader islamic leader being the head of state you can't just do uh, skirmishes here and there on your own in a small groups and uh, that, that's not um, uh, you know ingrained in islamic teaching rather it must be guided by the scholars and led by the head of the state and we don't find that in any of these uh, jihadi movements unfortunately and that, that, that is why they make a lot of mess and that cause more problem and uh, in a way not propagate Islam the way it should be propagated but sometimes they just go quite crazy and then actually cause more harm to the da'wah of Islam and then because the idea is that we all Muslims are there to help non-Muslims come to Islam against shaitan, against the jal, against the antichrist, against the imposters, against the you know devil and the devil ideas. So we have to have that compassion. That's our responsibility to show the correct picture of Islam, true figure of Islam, not to hate those, rather be compassionate. Rasulullah would spend his night in sajda, in prostration, in ruku, in the bowing down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking for the forgiveness and guidance for everyone and he would make dua for everyone and he would just cry for people so much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the most merciful most gracious and yet he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
book from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, perhaps, are you going to kill yourself for these people who have abandoned you, who didn't listen to you? Are you going to cause yourself harm by crying too much for them? So you are really into uh, love with these people so much that you're trying to save them from hellfire, they do not listen to you. So means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hinting to the fact that don't do that too much. I know you're quite keen and concerned about the Akhirah, but don't do to the point where it would harm you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing His love and mercy for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, obviously which is the most uh, beloved to Allah and that there's no uh, way that anyone else could, could have any any proportion of that. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best of the creation and most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it comes to him and him getting affected by that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed his concern and love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, telling him, you know, don't worry about them too much to the point that it causes you any harm. I can't accept that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't allow him to do too much for, for organization. And yet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by being the most merciful of the creation, he would go out of his way to help people out. So this is the Ummah which needs to follow the footsteps of Rasulullah Unfortunately, you find the du'at, the da'i, the people who were put into Islam, they themselves have not got even uh, an iota of this, a, a small you know, grain of this much of concern and mercy and love and compassion and empathy for people around them. Rather, they have animosity. Forget about non-Muslims, they do not even have a compassion for people who are from the different groups. So the Tablighi uh, brother would not have that much concern for the the Salafi brother who is into the, some sort of da'wah uh, politically, uh, into election for example. And likewise, uh, likewise you'll find vice versa. The people there in Madrasa would not have that much compassion for the Sufi, the Sufi in, you know, in the you know, hermit and the uh, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their zikr they might some of them you would, would find that they haven't got that much of love and zeal for their own. so this is this is the problem we should be uh, the the embodiment of sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whereby we would help each other out the goal is to save everyone from hellfire against shaitan and dajjal the shaitan actually uh, challenges Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this so since we don't do it we don't have that love and compassion so then the final group you could be the, the welfare people who do a lot of charity work and they, they work day in day out as long as they've got their basic essentials sorted out their knowledge their action their practice and alhamdulillah it's fantastic it's good very good and it's needed so all of these are needed as long as no one considers themselves to be the noah's ark so we are the ones who will be saved all the rest is footnote they are not going to be important at, at all they, they are not got any idea what they're doing they're just wasting their time they're not upon the haq we are upon the haq everyone else is out and that's obviously too much of arrogance this is the ujub this is the vanity which is not ex at all accepted this this is ishtihad even the four imams have never had that they they would say we expect us and our view to be the haq, yet we have the ihtimal of batil. We might be on the wrong, the, 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 our, our opponent might be on the right. We keep that possibility. And yet you would not find in the last 100, 200 years people, they, they would not have that much of, uh, you know, dhyana, the honesty. So now people are coming up with all the different ideas how to squash it. There's a new group of Muslims in the last 100 years especially, which has gone quite popular these days, called mulhidun or mutajaddidun. They're not truly rejected. I'm not talking about those who reject Islam as a whole. No, those who want to support Islam, those who are part of Islam, they want to be there to help Islam. But their idea is uh, to, you know, the previous generation had a lot of innovations, adding things to bring people to Islam and make it more like uh, appealing. And these people are doing completely opposite in this century. What they're doing, they're chopping off Islam and they're taking the rulings and stuff away based on sometimes based on you know maqasid the sharia if you say maqasid the sharia the goal is to achieve that so then why worry about this don't worry about the you know so heading is the key the goal is the key so if, if, if we want to do this why bother about certain actions certain things so they become more sort of you know uh, and then uh, going into this uh, maqasid based uh, discussion and in a way making 
everything a bit more redundant, really, practically, if they go into extremes. But obviously, Waqasid al-Sharia is very important.